anywhere. Your host, your hero, my uncle, Rad Green. Yeah. I, got say, I got a group here tonight. Well, unfortunately, we got a bit of an emergency up at the lodge this week. One of the lodge members is missing, vanished without a trace, and he's not even married. So that can only mean one thing. Alien abduction? Oh, no, Harold, no, no. If the aliens ever come here, you'll be the first one they'll grab. <laughs> cool. Yeah, well, I got a fair foul play going on here. Because uh, this guy hasn't moved more than 20 feet in the last 18 years. Not old man Sedgwick. No, not old man Sedgwick is right. Melvin Duffy! Melvin Duffy, right? right Harold, Melvin Duffy is dead. Well, you didn't say why he hadn't moved. <laughs> It's Ranger Gord. Ranger Gord is missing from his tower. We're gonna go look for him as soon as we get the 4x4s all gassed up. Everything you guys do is all gassed up. <laughs> we should be looking for him on foot. Oh, where's the fun in that, Harold? You're searching for somebody. It's not supposed to be fun. Oh, yeah? Then how come they call it a search party? <laughs> from this episode of our show. We even got a special surprise for you. We're you know, kind of a secret thing going here. I think you're going to be really... Oh, my gosh. No, no. Don't show them that. Don't let them... Okay, okay. We blew it. Okay, Harold, I spoke. Hey, guys. Guys. Okay, Harold. I spoke to all the guys. They're willing to let you join the search party. But you can't keep yelling, slow down. And if you fall off the roof rack, we're not going back for you. <laughs> okay, that sounds fair. I'm in. Well, I can't believe Ranger Gord is missing. I went up there, up to the fire watch tower 13. The whole deal had fallen over. It looked like beavers had kind of gnawed on the front legs there, and the whole thing collapsed, and Ranger Gord's gone. Everything's gone. His clothes, his stamp collection, his eight tracks, the, the lava lamp, even the disco belts. So this is serious. Oh, no, Uncle Red. Oh. This, yeah. Okay, I don't, you know, I don't, this is going to be scary to even say, but what if, ah, yeah, I, know. You know, what, I mean, I hate to even think about it, but what if, you know, I mean, what if happens if, yeah. oh, I mean, the worst case scenario is that he comes back to the lodge. Yeah. Don't even think about it. I know. Don't even think about it. Oh, life is full of mystery, things that bother you and me, like how come everyone else is overpaid? But the biggest mystery to mice and men It comes up in conversation again and again and again Is how in the holy blazes are sausages made Well, they take a little of this and a bit of that Round up hooves and lots of fat Hide and hair and bone and bark and twig Beans and arteries, gristle and grit And they grind it up fine so that it'll all fit Round up into the exit ramp of a pig Welcome to the Possum Lodge Word Game. And this week's grand prize is for 100 assorted treetops from Buzz Sherwood's helicopter rides. Okay, Uncle Ray, you have 30 seconds to get Mr. Dougie Franklin to say this word. Love. Love. Yeah, all right. Oh, love. Okay. All right, Dougie, when there's someone who you can't live without, that's... A kidney donor. <laughs> no, no, no. No. This is what a man and woman feel between each other. Gear shift? <laughs> okay. When a couple kiss and cuddle, okay, they're in... The back seat. No. <laughs> um, passion. Monster truck. Oh. <laughs> well, I mean, you know those romantic songs they have? They're always about... Cars and surfing. <laughs> all right, all right, Dougie. Your heart's pounding. Yeah, okay. You're barely touching the ground. Yeah, yeah. You're in... Fourth gear. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. You're with the one you dream about. Yeah. You're everything, okay? You're in... My garage. <laughs> Almost out of time, Uncle Ray. Oh, uh, Dougie. There's more to life than cars and monster trucks. Oh, you've never been in love, have you? There you go. <laughs> More and more people are taking longer and longer vacations. 
That's because more and more people are getting the hoist out of their jobs there, you know. So you want a holiday cheaply, but you want to go in style. Well, this week on Handyman Corner, we're going to turn the possum van into a palace on wheels. That's right. All this stuff is going to go into the van there. We're going to be traveling in style. All right, we start by laying a remnant carpet in there that we got from Stinky Peterson. You actually owed it to me since his dog was sick. Now, carpeting something that you might overlook, but you know what? The carpeting there makes it look like your van was customized by a professional customizer. So, think customizerly. All right, once you've got your wheel-to-wheel -wheel carpeting in there, you want to toss in your very favorite recliner rocker. I mean, you're going to be pretty tired after a hard day of driving. You need something comfortable to sit on, huh? When you're on vacation, spoil yourself. If this recliner is rocking, don't bother knocking. <laughs> or more likely, if it's reclining, don't bother chiming. All right, you're gonna need something to keep your food fresh and your beverages cold. You could buy one of them undersized, overpriced RV fridges, but I say, why bother when you already own one just like this? <laughs> All right, now, just out of bed, microwave, entertainment center there, your clock radio, Couple of gas lamps, picnic table, chemical toilet, you're in business. <laughs> All right, I'm thinking we need to maybe scale down or scale up or maybe even lose some weight here. <laughs> All right, uh, time for a rethink. <laughs> well, you see how I got everything arranged in here. Well, you won't believe how it's open space, huh? I never thought for a second that the possum van could turn into so much of stuff on the running boards here. But, you know, of course, the secret, you know, when you're doing a project like this is to, to place everything so that it uses the space economically, ergonomically, and, well, astronomically. Really? I got the washer here and the dryer and got the, the whole unit all uh, set up here. It's just, it's unbelievable, isn't it, how much space we're getting out of the van? Yeah. <laughs> Of course, another secret is the oriental art of the feng shui, I think, which is awful good with the breaded chicken. And that, what that is, it creates the space, gives you a flow. When you want to talk flow, how about hot and cold running water and a spare tire right there handy when you need it? I mean, is this cozy or what, eh? You can live like a king and take it on the road with you. Imagine just sitting in here and driving all day long, huh? Now that's a holiday. That's living. And of course, with this unit here, you got all the controls right at your fingertips, huh? You got your wipers, you got the frost. Air conditioning. Dang. So there you have it, the ultimate motorhome. Why don't we take her for a lap around the block and see how she handles? So remember, if the women don't find you handsome, they should at least find you handy. <laughs>
No, no, no. I'm telling you, but if he's anywhere within 20 miles, he's going to see the smoke. Oh, that's, you know, that's a good idea. They're using signal flares. No, no. Uh, Stinky's pickup had a touch of spontaneous combustion there, Harold. <laughs> Barbecue fell off his tailgate. And those idiots that designed trucks and put the gas tank at the back. You know, Harold, you maybe want to help us uh, search here, too. Oh, no, no, no. I think I'll just stay here and help direct ambulances. <laughs> Here on Tricks of the Trade, we usually have a guy who has been there, done that. This time we got somebody who's been caught, done time. <laughs> Here's Mike Hammer. Take her away, Mike. Thanks, Mr. Green. <clears throat> you know, when people find out I'm an ex-con, they, uh, they always ask me how to avoid getting mugged. Hey, I could use the cash. Why should I tell you? <laughs> <laughs> ah, gee, I love that type of humor. <clears throat> okay, uh, if you want to avoid getting mugged, the thing to do is stay away from muggers. <laughs> no, seriously, look. If you're far away from a mugger, he can't mug you, right? Right? Now, I don't know how about the long arm of the law, but a criminal's arm is only about yay long. See? Can't reach it. See? Now, if you're really stupid enough to hang out with a bunch of muggers, you should learn this self-defense move. Here, take it. <laughs> See? That's it. You just remember, just remember those three little words. Here, take it, and you hand over your wallet, and you'll be broke, but healthy. <laughs> See? Actually, you know, I wouldn't worry about it at all, because, you know, the odds against getting mugged in a big city are about one in a thousand. So that's like 365 days in a year into a into thousand. You carry... Well, it works out to about three years, right? So, one day out of every three years, stay home. You'll be fine. I got down the pond a little bit ahead of Bill there, and I was skipping the stones, brought back a lot of memories. Leave me alone, Bill. Uh, brought back a lot of memories when I was a kid and everything. I don't know what the adventure was, but I was just kind of throwing some... What is he? What do we do? Oh. So those, those weren't just ordinary. Well, I got one left. I got here, here, Bill. You, have to, you got one left. You got one left for your collection. That's still a collection. Even one. Yeah, one is a collection. What are you doing? Oh, oh. All right, not come on. Now, come on. There's lots of stones, Bill. There's stones all over the place. Stones in the hills and in the valley. Yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> it's easy to perk them up, you know. So Bill goes out looking for more rocks. Got to start again with the rock collection. If at first you don't succeed, watch your head. Oh, 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 and your foot. All right, all right, all right. No, we're fine. We're good. We're good. We're good. All right. Uh, Bill sees a stone there. He sees a rock. That's it. Ah, ah. All right. Uh, Bill sees a rock. It's a collect. Look at the magnet. This is a look at the magnifying glass. Magnifies so he can see the, the various grains and maybe some of the minerals. And this is the kind of thing the Briex people should have had, perhaps. Here's something you younger kids might have watched. See what happened there? The, might, the sun is actually going through the glass, and it's... Well, you can... We did, I don't know. Not the rock. Not the, what is it? Oh, there it is. There it is. It's your foot. It's your foot, Bill. It's your foot. Where are you going? Oh, the pond. Oh, yeah, the pond. Oh, there. In you go. 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 There. <laughs> Feels good. I think that's how tea was invented. Anyway, we'll get that uh, shoe off. Just empty that out, Bill. Empty that out. It's quite a bit of water. Why not? Uh, that holds a lot. Must be one of those water Jordans. <laughs> anyway, we get back to looking for the rocks there. And uh, look out, Bill. There's a rock there. Oh, no. It's not a rock. It's a, it's a rake. It's almost like a rock. It certainly felt like a rock. Oh, Bill's got one there. Got the, got the, I'm fine. Don't worry about me, Bill. I'm okay back here. No, no, I'm fine, really. No, no, don't bother yourself. Later that summer, Bill had actually uncovered the rock. Man. I was just sitting down for a couple of weeks there. And anyway, he's got to get the... How are you going to get... How are you going to... How are you going to... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What are you doing there? Oh, he's... Oh, all right. Oh, this is good. A little bit of physics here. We got the law of the lever. And he's gonna stick that in and hopefully just leave her. No, he's not. He's oh boy. And these are grown men trying this. You know, bear that in mind. Anyway, we're trying to get that thing out there. Never go down. Oh, up she goes. There you go, Bill. Yeah, there's your rock. Go get it. Where you go. Go get it. Go get it. It's yours, Bill. It's all yours. It's all yours. Oh. And there's Bill's rock collection. Oh, that's no, that's not perfect. No, no, something wrong with that. 
There we go. Perfect. So yeah, the uh, search party for Ranger Guard turned into the rescue party for the other half of the search party. <laughs> uh, we saved all the lives. Over half the trucks and most of the hot dogs. Yeah. <laughs> no sign of Ranger Gord, though. No, no, that's, uh, that's just the way it goes. <laughs> Did you go insane right, from loneliness right, and ran off or something? We didn't know where you were or nothing. You were lost. We're looking for you. I'm fine. Okay, good. No, I called out to you guys in the woods, but you didn't hear me, I guess, over all the uh, engine noise. Oh, yeah. No, we were, uh, we were looking for you. You know, but your tower was tipped right over there. Yeah, we assumed the worst. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I finally ran out of cream corn, so I was forced to eat the front two legs of my tower. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't eat the back legs because they're maple, and as you know, Red, I'm hardwood intolerant. <laughs> so what? You just, you just walked away, just like that? Well, not exactly. I mean, uh, it's been 17 years since I last got a paycheck, so I decided to take a stand. All right, yeah. They laid me off. <laughs> Government cutbacks. Oh, yeah. No, no, there's, there's a lot of that these days, yeah. No, this was 17 years ago when they laid me off. <laughs> yeah, the, the post office lost a letter containing my pink slip. Oh, can you believe that? Can you imagine if the, if the forestry department was run as badly as the post office? Boy, the letters we wouldn't get. <laughs> Anyways, I'm back in civilization. <laughs> well, I know you're not. You're a possum watch. I notice you teenage boys are kind of into the fast food, fast cars, and fast computers, whereas the girls are just into fasting. <laughs> Speed's a big issue with you young folks, huh? Seems the faster things go, the happier you are. Guess you never heard the story about the tortoise and the hare, okay? Because to me, you young guys are kind of like the hare. And us older fellas are more like the tortoise. We don't have the hair anymore. <laughs> I'll tell you, if life has taught me one thing, and that's probably all it has, it's that the faster you go, the more you miss. <laughs> now, as you get older, you're going to realize that we're all pretty much heading for a brick wall. The question is, how hard do you want to hit it? <laughs> Remember, anything worth doing is worth doing slow. Welcome to the expert portion of the show. That part of the show where we examine those three little words that men find so hard to say. I don't know. <laughs> That's so true. All right. All right. Joining me, Uncle Red, in the expert portion of the show this week is his good friend and the owner of Humphrey's Everything Store, Mr. Dalton Humphrey. Welcome. This week's letter goes as follows. Dear experts. Uh -huh. My wife and I have been married for 32 years. Well, there's very little we can do for you now. That's, that's, that's not it. Just, just, there's oh, more. Oh, just, right. just let me finish here. Okay. Um, recently, recently, the last of our seven children graduated from high school and moved off to go to McDonald's University. Ever since our last child left, my wife has been in a terrible blue funk. What's her problem? No idea. Now, did I hear right? They had seven kids. The kids have gone. Now that the kids have gone, she's upset. Yes. The kids come back home? No, no. They're just, you know, they, they grew up and then they went off to university. So she's home alone now with her husband. So. <laughs> she, she raised the children, you know, all those years and, you know, nourished them and fed them and watched them grow, supported them. And they moved out on to university. <laughs> She's alone with the man now, you know, that her husband, and they're alone in the house, you know, and he doesn't understand her moods or her needs and want, you know. You could just, it's an empty nest syndrome is what it is, you know. <laughs> empty nest syndrome, you know, this poor woman's going through a big change in her life. Oh. oh. It's the change. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I, I know what the change is. I just never heard it called empty nest. That's a bit graphic. <laughs> You know, if you turn the thermostat down, it'll be fine. No, no, no. You know, see, her children are gone. Her children have moved on. 
her life. You, you don't get it, do you? No, you don't. You don't even get it. You, ah, oh, you guys should be so ashamed. You don't even get it. What is his problem? Puberty. <laughs> Ranger Gord is coming. Don't upset him, all right? What do you mean? What? Well, apparently he spent 18 years in the woods. He's got nothing to show for it, okay? Eventually, he's going to realize he wasted his life. Oh, yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Hi, guys. Yep. Hi, guys. Oh, look, yeah, it's Gord. Hey, Gord. Hey, hi, hi, hi. How you doing? Good, good, Just uh, wandering around the lodge, seeing how things have changed. Like, uh, A lot of things have changed in 18 years. Harold, Harold, nothing. Sorry, what? 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 <laughs> No, the lodge is pretty much the same. Yeah. Furniture's the same. Yeah. <laughs> same garbage in the corner. Yeah. <laughs> same tub of cottage cheese in the fridge. We gotta throw that I'll in. make a note. All right. Stinky's still on workman's comp. Buster's still dating that waitress. Yeah. Moose's nickname still fits him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Nobody's gone back to work or started a new job oh, or right. gone back to school. That's it. Nothing. <laughs> 18 years yeah. and nothing to show for. <laughs> Oh, no, Gord, now don't be hard on yourself. Huh? <laughs> Me? No, I'm going to cash in on everything I've learned in the last 18 years in the wilderness. Yeah, I'm going to create a character that'll teach kids about the wilderness, you know, like Smokey the Bear or Elmer the Safety Elephant. I'm going to be Gopher Gord. Okay, then. Okay, good for you. Great. <laughs> 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 See, that's a squeal of the possum. That means meeting time. Yeah. Oh, wow, you guys still do that? <laughs> yeah, wow. yeah, they do. Yeah. Wow. This is right down here. <laughs> well, you know, it's, it's sad, you know, people don't realize they're wasting their lives. <laughs> Maybe they just don't want to look. <laughs> if my wife is watching, uh, I'll be coming straight home after the meeting, and I hope the furniture is back the way I like it, in the store window. <laughs> and to the rest of you, thanks for watching. On behalf of myself and Harold and the whole gang up here at Possum Lodge, you keep your stick on the ice. All right. One more time. Okay, well, we just got the one announcement for tonight. Um, and it's uh, from Ranger Gord. He's inviting everyone back to his cabin for a sleepover. Uh, and there'll be prizes. Oh, great, it's going to be prizes. Terrific. For the scariest story and for the best Barry White imitation. <laughs> Which actually is sort of the same thing. So. <laughs>